This is an RTX 3060. And this, this is the card that's meant to be taking it on, the RX 6600 XT. Let's do this. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Fire Cuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Fire Cuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So first up, a brief history lesson. Now, the 3060 Ti launched back in December of 2020, offering up great performance along with ray tracing, DLSS, and all the other NVIDIA technologies that we all know and love, for a reasonable price of $399. And before anyone says anything, yes, hardly anyone saw it at that price due to the, let's call it, situation that's been going on, which at least in the UK is actually getting better, but still not kind of where it should be at this point. Now, shortly after, in February, its little brother, the RTX 3060, launched with the low, low price of $329. Now, this is where everything becomes a little bit of a confusing affair, as the cheaper and lesser RTX 3060 came with 12 gig of GDDR6, whereas the TI only came with 8 gig of GDDR6. Basically, that translated to better performance in some titles and at some resolutions of one card, and then the same for the other. I mean, even to this day, I get questions all the time on which one you should buy. And frankly, it's a tough one to analyze and dissect. But for the most part, both cards are kind of aimed at the hardcore 1080p market with a little bit of kind of 1440p. Now, while this was all going on, from the other side, AMD launched their 6700 XT GPU, aiming at giving stellar performance at 1440p, but well, for a higher price of $479. I mean, I'm no mathematician, but generally speaking, the more expensive product is going to be better performing. That's just life, that's how things work. Now, the issue is the offerings from AMD and Nvidia were too kind of, they were too far apart with two very different audiences. While the 30 series were focused on kind of 1080p gaming, the 6700 XT was more aimed at the hardcore 1440p gamer who didn't need ray tracing and DLSS and just wanted sheer unadulterated performance in their games. Now, in my opinion, this was an odd move as even now, when you look at the likes of the Steam hardware survey, 67.2% of gamers are still operating at 1920 by 1080 while only 8.49% are rocking 1440p. And for context, that illustrious 4K resolution that everyone strives for, well, that's sitting at a lowly 2.26%. So basically AMD had nothing, and I mean nothing to directly facilitate the largest segment of the gaming market, until now. So today sees the launch of the RX 6600 XT at an MSRP of 379 US dollars. And before I even talk about specs, design, my thoughts and whatnot, I know why you're all here. So let's run those glorious benchmarks.
Okay, so before I drill down into how things were, let's talk about the card itself. So it's a 6600 XT, but unlike the other cards we've actually had from AMD, there is no reference design, which I am actually a little bit upset about, as honestly, I like the look of the AMD reference cards. I mean, it's a big step up from how things used to be, though that wasn't really that hard to improve upon now, was it? So instead we have the MSI Gaming X. Now I'm sure you all know what a Gaming X is about. It's not a new design and MSI have been using the latest iteration of it for quite some time on other ranges of GPUs. Now for those of you I guess who don't know, it's a dual fan design which makes up part of MSI's patented Twin Froza 8 cooler. For context, here we go. I'm old enough to remember Twin Froza's inception. This is the eighth iteration of it now. And over the years, it has become one of the best cooling solutions for a graphics card to keep those frame rates high and those temperatures low. And we will have another video tomorrow going over this kind of a little bit more and comparing it to some of the other 6600 XTs coming to market. So definitely make sure you're subscribed and check that one out. So I guess MSI and the cooler to one side, what is the 6600 XT well, what's it really all about? I mean, all of the information you need is available on the AMD product page, but obviously there are some standout features for those who like, you know, nerding out over specifications. So to start with, it comes with 32 compute units, eight gig of GDDR6, a gain clock of 2,359 megahertz, and a boost clock of 2,589 megahertz. It has 32 meg of infinity cache, a 16 gigabit per second effective memory clock, and a TBP, or total board power, of 160 watts. Also, unlike its bigger brothers, it actually operates on PCI Express X8 instead of X16. Now, obviously being part of the RDNA2 family means that it has all of the features available to it to compete with Nvidia where it matters, like ray tracing for those fantastic visuals and Fidelity FX Super Resolution to compete with Nvidia's DLSS. Now, while the list of games supporting these are still frankly pretty low, it's only gonna get better over time, but it's nice to see a bit more of a level playing field now. I mean, that's for sure, but we do have to remember Nvidia have had these technologies for a lot, lot longer. So AMD are kind of in that weird situation where they're currently having to play catch up. Now, the specs I just quoted are specific to a, let's call it reference design. And with the MSI card that we have here, you would expect that to be improved upon. And you're not wrong. I mean, MSI have taken the 6600 XT and cranked things up ever so slightly. With a gain clock of 2428 megahertz and a boost clock of 2607 megahertz. So I guess a, a kind of modest increase over the reference specs. Though with anything lately, a higher boost clock doesn't generally kind of mean better performance. And so much of it can instead come down to the cooler by keeping those temperatures at bay so the core can stay at its boosted speed for a longer period of time. I mean, being an MSI card with a twin frozen cooler, there was never really any real worry in that department. So what can we take away from the benchmarks? Well, the card, at least from a price point perspective, sits between the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti. Though this being an MSI Gaming X model, it's probably around the same price, if not more, than a reference 3060 Ti at say $400 or maybe that little bit more. Sadly, at the time of filming, we've not actually been given anything concrete in terms of the pricing on this particular MSI model. So I'm just kind of guessing and spitballing based on previous launches. So if it sits between those two cards from the competition in terms of pricing, you'd expect the same in terms of performance, right? Right? Well, the issue here is that the card isn't bad, but it's not great either. It's just, well, all right. Kind of plain Jane, if you know what I mean. I mean, when we test GPUs, we look at multiple things. One being how it compares to the previous generation, which in this case is the 5700 XT, which launched for $399 back in July, 2019. And in all honesty, it's about the same performance wise in most tests. Yes, in some it was ahead, but only by a small margin, and in a couple it was actually behind, again, by a small margin. Where it does matter obviously comes down to efficiency, acoustics, and temperatures, which did see a better result. But you'd expect that with a newer generation. I mean, it's not gonna be worse than the older one, right? Now, if you're all about ray tracing, fidelity FX, and the latest RDNA 2 features, then it makes sense. But if you're not all for that, especially with the lack of title support, I mean, are you really gonna give a toss? When comparing to Nvidia, it's a 
bit of a tough one because more titles have RTX support, more titles have DLSS support, and they've had longer with those technologies too. Performance wise, it does sit where we expected between the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. But we actually have a theory in the office, so humor me for a second. Is the price of the 6600 XT wrong? In all honesty, we're comparing the price of a GPU in August 2021 to GPUs that launched in February of this year and December of last year. Right now, you can't get a 3060 for MSRP and you can't get a 3060 Ti for MSRP. So in my eyes, the 6600 XT should have an MSRP closer to the $300 mark, much like we saw with the 5600 XT at 279 back in January of 2020. Now, this is where things get stupidly tricky because everyone wants the best value for money, but are wanting to compare things from different timelines while ending up with the result that suits them. Like any GPU right now, the best one you can get, well, it's the one that you can afford and, of course, the one that's in stock at that particular time. In my opinion, and it kind of pains me to say it because you all know about the jaded and illustrious relationship I have with Nvidia, but the 3060 Ti seems to be the better buy if you could get it for a reasonable price. I'm not taking away from the 6600 XT, it's not a bad card, it's just not groundbreaking. And if it came out last year, I'd probably be saying something completely different. But maybe it's just too little too late and is maybe too expensive. You tell me by letting me know in the comments section below. And I'm going to leave it there, guys. You know, it's an interesting one, a weird one, but there you have it. If you like this video, you know exactly what to do. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.